Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm Betsy Linnell, and we will be talking this week about chapters 14, 15, and 16 of Welch's book, Side by Side, Be Human. Today, I have a very special guest with us. This is our own pastor, Ernest C. Brown Sr. Everyone, please welcome him. Thank you for being here, Pastor. Well, thank you for inviting me, Betsy. I'm glad to be here with you. You're welcome. So today, we're going to do something a little different. We've set this video up to be an interview. So I'm gonna ask you some questions based on Welch's book, and then you're gonna answer those. And we'd like you to answer both from your pastoral experience, but also personal life experience. So, are you ready? Nope. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> Welch states that suffering tends to summon Satan. Why do you think that's the case? Well, I tend to agree with Welch. I think Satan understands our humanness. And with our humanness comes a, a vulnerability that he understands all too well. Um, you remember when uh, Jesus was approached and they said to him, uh, good master, and he responds back and says, you know, who's good? Why do you call me good? No one's good but the Father. Well, he was saying, first of all, well, if you're calling me good, I must be equal with the Father. But secondly, he was saying to us that we're not as good as we think we are, that, that all of us have some issues in our life, if you will. And our, our humanness brings some predispositions uh, and, you know, I call that predisposition sin. And, and I think he does too. And, uh, you know, the Bible tells us we've all sinned. We've all come short of God's standard for us, which is absolute holiness, absolute righteousness, uh, absolute perfection. We all come short of that. And our behavior and how we conduct our lives is not always consistent with how God wants us to, uh, to live them. And so, um, those predispositions to sin cause us to, uh, to walk, to live, to act, to behave contrary to the will of God and the Word of God. And it's a problem that we all have. You know, uh, to say we don't have the problem goes against what Scripture teaches. We all have the problem. Satan knows this. So that when we find ourselves suffering, um, we, we end up in that wilderness area. And in the wilderness, we feel, we feel alone, we feel uh, vulnerable. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I have a famous story that I, I tell and I've told many times in church about suffering through um, kidney stones. And on the way to the hospital, my son trying to focus me on Jesus and me telling him to shut up <laughs> because I was in so much pain. Yeah. And it was after that experience that it became very real to me how difficult it is to focus on the Lord when you're in pain and when you're suffering. Um, you know, with all the attempts, he was the person coming alongside of me. He was the one that was helping me to make it through this time of suffering. But, you know, but I was kicking against that because the pain was just so overwhelming. Well, Satan knows that, you know, he understands that full well. And so he loves to get us out there in that wilderness and just make havoc with, with our lives. But the Lord has uh, provided for us a, a way to make it through and to journey through these types of things. You know, he has the power now. Satan does have the power um, to tempt us and to accuse us and to confuse us when we find ourselves out there but the Bible says that it's important for us to keep our eyes on Jesus Christ, fixing your eyes on Jesus Christ because he's the author and because he's the perfecter, he's the mature of our faith. Oh, that is so good. You know, it's so true when we're in that season of pain, Satan is so good at knowing exactly what's gonna tempt me and exactly what's gonna draw me away. And so, you know, I have to learn to be aware of his tricks and aware of those devices. Um, Welch talks about that. Why is that so important to us as believers to be so aware of his specific devices? Well, the first reason I, I, I agree with him and say it's important to do that is because the Word of God says that. Mm -hmm. it tells us don't be ignorant of Satan's devices. Don't be ignorant of Satan's tricks. That's the Word of God. And, uh, but the Bible also teaches us that Satan was ultimately 
defeated at Calvary. And uh, Jesus became our sacrifice. And uh, uh, on the cross, the Bible says he was the propitiation for our sins. A big word, but it's a, it's a big word that has a lot of meaning for us. In other words, he was the sacrifice that satisfied the sin debt. So the fact that he's taken care of that, my sin, past, present, and future is a reality. It's a truth. It's a foundational truth, I believe, for us. You know, our sins have been forgiven, but the Bible also says that Satan's a thief. And uh, he's determined to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And he is constantly on the job. He, he wants to mislead us. He wants to deceive us. He wants to confuse us. And he wants to lead us through that door that leads to destruction. He wants to steal our soul. He wants to steal our life. He wants to steal any joy, happiness that we have. And he'll use suffering in order to accomplish those purposes. Now, you can't take our salvation away for those of us who are in Christ, but he can certainly make our experience not a joyful experience if we allow him to. Now, Paul tells us in Ephesians, do not be ignorant of Satan's strategies. Don't be ignorant of his devices. Don't be ignorant of his tricks. He's a strategist. Yes. And I believe that he tailor makes the sin that we have that predisposition to, he makes it just for us. I know you've seen people, they are to get couples that are together and you say, what does he see in her? Well, you, you, that's not for you to see. <laughs> that's for him to see. That's for her to see because they've, that's been tailor-made tailor for them. For each other. Not for you. Now we like to point out other folks' sin because sometimes their sin is most unlike our own. Or sometimes it's but, like our own. <laughs> or, and sometimes it's like our own. But don't deny the fact that you've got something tailor-made for you that you're struggling with and that you're, you're dealing with. That's why he tells us, put on the full armor of God in Ephesians chapter 6. You know, and he talks about all the different pieces, beginning with that helmet of salvation to protect our mind because it all starts there. It starts in the mind. And um, that we're going to be able to stand firm because life is a war zone. It's a war zone. Satan lies in wait. He's waiting for hardships in our lives that just leave us vulnerable to his lies. And so, scriptures, prayer, and the assurance that uh, we, we know the resurrection life are so important in our life in order for us to make it through these times. Oh, absolutely. You know, that really just humbles me. And Welch talks about that too. He talks about how that humility and that patience, that long suffering that God talks about are just the prerequisites for us to even be able to face our own sin. So what does he really mean by like patience and humility being a prerequisite to face sin? Well, because if we're gonna deal with other folks' sin, I, I think it all begins with humility and humility recognizes my own sin, okay? It, it recognizes my own brokenness. It, it recognizes the fact that I have issues. Um, I, I think uh, how I approach other folk um, about their sin um, and how I do that properly is all predicated on my humility and understanding what God has done for me. That I'm where I am because of the grace of God and because of the mercy of God. Now, while I understand that we don't want to dismiss sin, we still want to confront sin because people cannot heal or be healed right. without really confronting that sin. I mean, as a parent, none of us would allow our children just to do whatever they want to do if we really love them. We, we put boundaries and we put rules in place out of love for their protection and for their best interest. Well, God does the same thing for his children. Mm -hmm. You know, he has boundaries for us. I'm and, understanding that way more now. Yeah, yeah, and, and, uh, and, and so it's because of love. He doesn't say no because he uh, just wants us to have a joyless existence. He says no because I got something better for you. I, when God says no, I've learned he always has a better yes. Mm. I like that. You know, and so, um, you know, we, 
we understand that we can't change anybody. We, we can't even change ourselves. And so what our job is to, to do is to, um, is, is to be humble in approaching and allowing God to use us to bring that individual to the place where they need to be so that conversion can take place in their life. Uh, I, I remember um, God saying, when you've converted your brother, you know, what does that mean? Well, because you've loved them, you, you've confronted the sin that's in their life uh, so, so that they can live their best life uh, according to the will of God. Then patience comes in. Patience comes in because of the fact you can't change anybody again. Going back to that piece, you can't change anybody. You can't even change yourself. So it's God that makes the change. We plant seeds. Sometimes we water those seeds. But God is always the one that gives the increase. And that's not just in relation to salvation. It's also in relation to change in individual lives. I preach every Sunday. I teach every week the Word of God. But I know while I'm preaching and teaching that I have absolutely no power to change anyone's life. You know, and so what God calls us to do is to come alongside other folk and to walk with them through their journey of growth and, uh, and maturity and becoming who God wants them to become. That's good. I like that picture of, you know, realizing that as much as we would like to bring the growth, sometimes we can't. And so the last question of our time together has to do with the way that Welch identifies three different occasions in which we can help people talk about their sin. When someone faces temptation, when we have seen the sin, and then when someone discloses or confesses the sin. What spiritual advice would you give to us as our pastor of helping someone who is attempting to get through and experiencing each of those occasions? Yeah, well, all of these are, are kind of tough. Um, you know, Welch says in his book, the sin is our most dangerous problem. And uh, the spirit, the word, and uh, the community are, are God's primary uh, weapon for doing battle again. So, so it takes us again, it takes us again coming alongside other folk, you know, to help them as they are dealing with temptation, helping them as they uh, are, are dealing with uh, not only temptation, they may have fallen into sin. Um, when someone is facing temptation, uh, uh, I like to point him to 1 Corinthians 10, 13. You know, Paul says, uh, no temptation has taken you, but such that is common to man. God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted above that which you're able, but will with that temptation always provide a way to escape. He said there's always an escape route. And sometimes people need help being pointed to that escape route. You know, the, the, the exit sign's right there on the door. It's in red, bold letters. Sometimes I try to find my own escape route instead of realizing that God's gonna provide the escape route. Always, he said there's always an escape route. But sometimes folks say, you know what, I think I'd rather stay in the room. Mm. And so, we have to help them to see, well, it's not gonna be good to stay in that room either, you know. So when we have seen sin, then, you know, the decision has to be made whether we're gonna call the sin out or whether we're gonna cover the sin. And so, um, you know, we shouldn't be silent uh, out of our fear. That's we, hard, Pastor. Well, I, it is hard. It, I mean, it's difficult. I don't, you know, I, that's why it takes humility and patience you don't rush in without the Spirit's lead, lead on this, you know, and do it out of your own flesh, because I guarantee you, if you do it in the flesh, it's gonna be bad. It's gonna turn out, it's gonna turn out bad, but um, it becomes important that, um, that we not have that spirit of fear, uh, and it's important that we don't do it out of anger. Mm. Mm. Now, fear is when it's happening to somebody else. That I can be, I don't know if I want to say something about this. Anger's a little easier to do, yeah. isn't it? With anger, <laughs> it may be happening to you, uh -huh. so I don't have any problem calling you out on what you're doing to me. Mm -hmm. But we don't want to do it in anger either. We want to allow the Holy Spirit to have His way. So, um, you know, it's, it goes back to um, that parenting piece. You know, we, we, we're just not going to allow the person that we love just to fall into danger or harm or, 
or destruction. And, and then when someone discloses and confesses sin, then it's indication, as Welch says, that the Spirit's already at work. And so that's a good thing. That, that's a good thing. And, and in my, my experience as a pastor, certainly I've had folk that I've had to bring in and, and, and confront lovingly about their sin. Uh, I praise God that I've never had anyone uh, who I have confronted in love even get angry because they, they recognize, I, I think it's just the Spirit of God operating and working because first of all, and even exercising discipline, you know, I know he doesn't talk too much about that, but I, as a pastor, you know, you would exercise Absolutely. discipline, but it's always out of love and it's always for restoration. Hmm. It's never for punishment. It's like God wants to use you. We're going to get you back to where you were and where he was using you. And so that becomes our goal. And our goal is to please God. That, that's our number one goal, to please God in what we do. And so, um, yeah, that, that would kind of, I don't know if I answered your question. You not. did yeah. answer it. And actually, you've answered it in a way that I haven't really thought about, not being a parent myself until just recently. but. Seeing the Father as that one that loves us enough to want to restore us. And that's always our goal as a parent, is we want to discipline our child, but then bring them back. And so, Pastor, thank you for your time today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing with us and talking about what it's like to be human and that we really, truly do need to suit up. We need to put on that full armor of God. Let us demonstrate humility and patience towards one another. As we talk about our struggles, and our sins. And then certainly, last but not least, we have to show love to one another as we continue, even in spite of our sin, walking side by side.